Hello my friends, how are you doing? Today I will show you how to figure out what to adjust in your photos. My name is Olivio, I'm a professional designer and I want to thank all of my patrons who support me and make these videos possible. Also tomorrow in my live stream I have a star guest Alex from the YouTube channel The Photographic Eye, a really cool channel where he's talking about photographic concepts, about photographers to understand better the art of photography. So check that out and also of course we're going to review the challenge of the week tomorrow so it's going to be awesome. Let's talk about how to understand what you should adjust in your pictures and how the right way is to do that, right? So the first thing we need to do for that is to understand the purpose of photography for you and your personal expression. Looking at photography, the camera has some cultural processes already built into the machine by the way it is taking the picture, by the way the programs inside of the cameras are helping you to create a beautiful shot. So there's already some adjustment happening and you're of course selecting the shot yourself. But after that, what you do with the picture is applying your own expression. And this is where your shot becomes its own. Because of course, when you go to Google, you can find photos in thousands of variations already out there about almost anything. But when it comes then to adding your own expression, to showing people what you see in the world, this is where you become the photographer and where your style becomes the language in which you show people the world, right? So that is really important to see that difference. And this can be from not editing it at all to editing it a lot and make it look very different from the original photo. Because for me, for example, I like to remove pictures from reality because reality is kind of boring. We see it every day with our eyes. I want to distance the picture from that and want to show a specific aspect of what I see in that situation by editing it, by adding color to it and by adjusting the image. So it's kind of larger than life. It tells a story. It becomes the story. I want to remove it from being a photo and adding a poetic access. This is more an artistic access, an artistic viewpoint, because the people can already see the things out there with their own eyes, but they can't see through my eyes, right? So that is where your style has the real importance, showing people what you see in the world. All right. So when we talk about a picture, how do we find out what to edit, how to edit it? When you look at this picture and I, I picked a simple example, so it's not too complex to understand what is going on here. I took this photo in Vienna in the subway and you can see that we have a lot of technical elements. We don't really have any natural elements in this photo. At the same time, we have a lot of lines. We have a lot of patterns that are going on and we have a lot of perspective that is going on. It's a wide angle lens. This is a 14 millimeter lens, very wide. And this is why we get this really, this rush of perspective towards the middle. Really, really nice. It is interesting to see that we have these metal structures and then we have these monitors and these uh, decoration elements like this red line is coming here. Then we have these lights, also a straight line going upwards, creating beautiful perspective. But then also we have these red cables up here. So analyzing your picture, looking at what is in the picture that I can see that I can work with that creates the dynamic of the shot. That is the first access to understanding how do you want to edit the picture afterwards? Because in this case, we have so many patterns, we have so many lines, we have so many technical elements. Of course, we're going to edit this differently than we would, for example, a photo of a baby or a cat or a flower, because those are soft and nice and cuddly. And this is very technical and very industrial. I also want to see what kind of colors are there that I can work with, that I can change, that I can enhance, that I can play with, right? So mainly what I see in this picture is we have these red lines up here and here in the decoration element that creates a beautiful structure. It's also a little Little bit of red here, left and right of that light. And then we have a lot of gray, a little bit of a warmer gray up here, a little bit of a 
a kind of a beige gray interestingly enough down here in these reflections on the sides this is basically the colors we can work with and we can think about what kind of contrast would we create for that what kind of play would we create with these colors we also have these reflections here and they are chaotic they are more organic in their structure so they contradict a little bit what is going in the shot and you can think about should I enhance that? Should I hide that in the shot? What do you want to do with that? So let's create two different versions of this picture. First of all, let's play around, for example, with black and white. So I go here, adjustments, I go to my black and white adjustment here. And of course we have here our color channel. So because we have red in here, you can see I can make this red part very dark. I can make it very bright to highlight it. So we have a lot of possibilities here to play with that. And of course you can see when I make these brighter, they are standing out more. I get more of these structures in my picture. I can of course overdo it, maybe blow it out. So this is completely white here. I can also make it just a little bit brighter or you can also go in the dark direction if you want to. So let's play with this. I want to have these lines visible, of course. So let's go like this looks kind of nice. Then here in the monitor, we have seen there is a little bit of blue there, which we often have in these monitors. So you can play with this. You, for example, again, you can make this very dark. You can make this very bright. So I think having dark monitors is better here because we have a bit of a contrast to the white or bright gray background. So that might give us additional elements here to create these patterns, create the structure here. Let's move the other levers around if they give us anything. There we have a little bit more of the blue. So let's bring this down a little bit more Then green. There's no green, of course, no nature down here all structures and then we have here yellow tone which interestingly enough we find up here also in these cables that look red to our eyes but actually there is some yellow in there and then of course also in these areas from the beige so um let's let's see should we bring this down how is it when we bring this up and bring this down that's actually not too bad okay that is that is nice. I like that. Good. So we have created a nice adjustment for black and white, but we have more options here because we can play around, for example, with contrast and brightness. So let's do that next because I want to show you can create a really interesting effect just with these two levers here. So if you heighten the contrast, you can see that the picture becomes more aggressive. It becomes sharper. It becomes more dynamic. You get sucked more into the perspective and see the perspective a lot more. So if you want to have a very edgy, uh, like loud picture, aggressive picture, this is the way to go, right? Um, that jumps really out at the viewer. And you can use this for different sides. For example, if you have a music cover and it's a, there's aggressive loud music, like a punk cover or something like that, this maybe is a good style for that, right? But then if we lower the contrast, you can see that everything in the picture becomes soft. And that can also be very interesting because first of all, we're taking a little bit of this industrial harshness out of the picture. You can also see that the picture becomes more flat. It becomes more even, less less busy, less dramatic. And now everything in the picture looks more like a beautiful design, a little bit like fashion. I would say a little bit like architecture in a very soft and delicate way, not in this very harsh and biting way that we see here. So this also goes into what do I actually want to have in my picture? What should the expression be? Then of course, with the brightness, you can also work with that. So for example, if I have the low contrast and I bring more brightness into the picture, you can see that this becomes even more dreamy, even more floaty than before. And that can be a very interesting effect. You can also even out a little bit for example, if you get into other adjustments like shadows and highlights, you can bring the values even closer together and play around with that. Now let's go also in here and go for a clarity filter. Let's play with this for a second because you can see 
Now I do this, if I bring up the clarity, you get a lot of this surface texture in here. And of course, in this case, I wouldn't add that because it's kind of defending the purpose of making the picture soft in the first place. But what I want to show you in this example is with clarity, for example, you can bring out these reflections. If you want to have that, that could be very interesting. Another thing that we haven't touched yet is the possibility of a vignette. So when you look at the complete picture we are having right now, it is very even, it's very white. And these lines that are going to the middle, they are also jumping out at us here on the side. So our eye is dragged outwards here through these lines over the edge of the picture. That might be good in some cases, but when you, for example, use a vignette, you can bring this toward the center. We can see here when we reduce this like so, let's bring the hardness down and then bring this up a little bit and make it like so. You can see that with the vignette, we have a lot more focus towards the center of the image. So that can be very, very beneficial. When you don't use the vignette, you can also use these empty spaces here left and right as kind of a negative space where you can basically relax your mind. But then when we have the vignette on, we are pushed towards the center. There is not so much floatiness and there is no much negative space here because this is getting so dark that our eye, our conscience is not that interested. We are only interested now in that center part here that is already very busy. And so that's also an interesting element to think about. What kind of impression do you want to create through that? That's a black and white version. Let's turn this off here and then I want to create another version I want to show you a very simple trick with this here, what you can do. And that is to use the white balance here, because like I said, we have some interesting um, values in here. And usually you would say, well, maybe split toning is the way to go here, but actually no, because the colors are in values where they are not specifically in bright or dark areas, but the color is the difference here. So what we can do here is for example, and again, look at the picture, see what is there, what kind of expression, what kind of elements are there. This is very important. Think about the, how can I say that the culture and the world you find inside of your photography. In this case, again, we have a lot of machines. We have very little nature with very technical, very industrial. So this leans into a shot that might feel a little bit more sci-fi, for example, right? So you can use this. So in this case, I want to make it more cooler because sci-fi, technic, machines, less warm than nature, more cool, artificial intelligence, all this kind of stuff has more this kind of cool character to it. So let's do that. And then we have these red colors here. So use the tint to your advantage in this case and move slowly along that line. And you can see how this is changing the value. This is making also the uh, the blue a little bit warmer because it's pressing it into violet and then just move along these lines and see, okay, what do I get with that? I'm especially looking up here because I have a nice combination of that uh, gray or in this case now bluish background and these red lines. So I want to have a nice combination of these two colors. So let's move this along. You can see you can go really hardcore blue if you want. And this, this can also be good if you want that, for example, for your musical cover, that could be interesting. But for this case, I don't want to have it that harsh. Let's go a little bit back here and then see, let's go here a little bit. Mm, I feel like this is already pretty okay. We have, yeah, this looks pretty good, I would say. Very nice. Okay, cool. So you can see just through that little adjustment, you have created a really nice color combination that brings more of an interesting contrast through this combination of the red and the gray that we find, because now we have a little bit of our own expression there that is also, again, a little bit removed from reality and through that creates your own expression and your own purpose, a little bit like poetry through an image, right? Okay, cool. So I would say let's also create here a little bit of a curve because I want to make this a little bit brighter. This is a different way to make the picture brighter. So I want to push this up over here and I want to push this in over here. So all the values are getting a little bit brighter like that. So that's kind of good. Let me see. Let me push this down here a little bit and then maybe also push this down here a little bit like so maybe push this down a bit and that already is pretty nice 
there we go let's see let's have this bit higher here and so like that you can create a really interesting nice expression what I'm also doing here is making the picture a little bit softer I don't have values right now that are completely black because I move this up and I push down the white values a little bit over here like that and so this has changed the picture and made it a little bit more floaty than it is before, right? So you can do these adjustments. Also, if you have found a nice adjustment and you want to limit it a little bit, you can still go here to opacity and say, okay, this is nice, but let's just go with, let's say 70% like this. And there we go. You have a different kind of edit. And this again, leans into that technical character that is more a little bit sci-fi. And through the colors, we have created a nice combination where basically we have now two colors that are playing with each other, which is this kind of a little bit violet blue tone and then the red tone on the other side. So I hope you found that video very interesting. Thank you very much for watching. Leave a like, that helps me absolutely a lot. And write in the comments what you think about that, how you would edit that. Thank you very much and see you tomorrow in my live stream. Bye. Mm -hmm.